Hello all my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are all of the books that I ended up reading in August. Baby, baby. So if you did not look at my community page or my Insta story, you might not know that I changed my channel name. I changed kind of like my channel brand. Um, I just changed everything um, involving my channel name. If you didn't know, uh, this year I'm a senior in college and I am going to be starting doing some field work out in the an actual school. I've just been hearing a bunch of other people in the teaching world, especially at my school, talking about how it's kind of probably safest to not have your social media public for all your students to see because parents will snoop, the school will snoop, kids will snoop. I don't want that to jeopardize my future career. I also did not want to make any of my uh, book accounts private and so I thought this would just be best to wipe anything from my actual name um, from my channel in hopes that this won't be found. It probably will, but to make myself feel better <laughs> about the whole thing, I am um, just taking precautions. Um, and I also want to say I kind of like love this new channel name even more because it's kind of more focused on what I like to read. When I first started my channel four years ago, I didn't primarily read romance books. And now that I do, I feel like this new channel name is actually perfect for me. So yeah, my nickname um, is Ava. A lot of people call me Ava. My closest friends, my family call me Ava. So feel free to call me Ava. You can call me Avery, Ava, don't care. In the sake of my videos, I'm going to be introducing myself as Ava from now on. And I obviously love romance books. So this channel is called Ava's Romance Books. You would have seen on all my other social media, I have already changed all of my um, channel names. <laughs> so Instagram, uh, Goodreads, TikTok, um, I've changed everything. Hopefully this doesn't confuse everybody. Also, I have a sniffly nose. Um, it's just allergies and the weather. Um, <laughs> I literally, you're required to get tested for COVID like your first two weeks here on campus. And my test came back like literally two days ago. I do not have COVID, but um, I'm a little sniffly. So please bear with me. Um, <laughs> I did not read all that many books in August. It's probably the lowest number of books I've read in a month in four years, honestly. And that's probably because of school starting and just work and all this other crap going on. <laughs> I honestly kind of like foresee myself reading this same amount of books up until December um, because this semester is going to be quite busy for me. I'm taking 18 hours and I have two part-time jobs and uh yeah <laughs> so i'm i'm very busy at the moment and whenever i have downtime i'm not really reading i'm doing schoolwork so i'm not behind on schoolwork um so anyway enough of me rambling let's talk about the books that i ended up reading in august first i want to talk about my only dnf for august which was misadventures of a good wife by uh, meredith wilde and helen hart hard hard hart Helen Hart. I do not know how to pronounce that. So whenever I don't know what audiobook to pick up, if there's not like a hold ready for me, I will just go to the Misadventures series. They're not companion books because they have nothing to do with one another. They just have all the word Misadventures in the title and they're all written by different authors. Um, and all of the books are on Libby for me to listen to. And so whenever I don't know what to pick up, I will pick up one of these. And this one was not, was not it, hun. <laughs> this romance book is about Kate and, um, Price and they were married at the beginning of this book and then she gets a phone call when he goes off on a business trip that his plane crashed and he's dead and so it's been a couple years and um her sister-in-law so her husband's sister takes her to this getaway tropical vacation because she's still in mourning over her husband and she wants her to like perk up a little bit and her husband shows up he's not actually dead i dnf this i think at 50 percent. it was so cringy so cringy and like ugh, no and the hero i did not like him at all he got so jealous and like pissed that she kissed another man a year or so after he died he died and he got so mad dude she was like grieving over you and like maybe that was helping her get over you or like kind of cope with the fact that you're gone and he was just so jealous and mad and like it was just very cringy didn't want to continue so i put it down i then want to talk about a book that i don't want to give too much light on but i feel like i need to talk about it and discuss it and that is someone you love by christian granada if you're on my close friends list on my instagram stories you would have seen me sobbing over this book one night in the middle of the night sobbing over it and saying it is my new favorite book of the year that is no longer the case 
and I am choosing not to associate myself with this book at all. I will link below Tori from Novel Life. She recently posted a reading vlog where she talks about how she recently found out that this book, because I got this recommendation from her, from her um, where she found out that this book is uh, almost kind of like a ripoff of another book. I think it's called Make, and S Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. I think that's the title and author. Um, but basically this book, Someone You Love, was written after that book and um, it is very similar. Tori wrote out all the similarities between the two and there's character names that are the same, plots, plot things that are the same, um, character traits, like it's scary similar like that she said. I plan on reading Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan soon hopefully if I find the time obviously I have a busy schedule because this was honestly so disheartening. I found beautiful quotes that I connect to so immensely as somebody who does have a disability and a chronic illness and has to have face scrutiny from other people when it comes to stuff like this. I definitely want to read Make a Sweet and hopefully I will find that connection that I found in this one in that book. Okay, moving on. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about Pipe Dreams by Serena Bowen next. Um, this is book number three in the Brooklyn Bruiser series and I gave this three stars. Didn't really care for it all that much. This is about um, Mike and I forget the heroine's name. What is her name? Lauren, Lauren. And so Lauren works for this hockey team and Mike is the goalie for the hockey team. A year or two ago, they were in a relationship with one another. It was very cute and very hot, but he um, was a single father. Um, and then he finds out that his ex has cancer. And so he ditches Lauren to go be with his ex-wife while um, she is dying and to take care of his little girl and be in the same house as them and take care of them, um, which I totally understand that, but I really hated what he did and like he just ditched Lauren with no explanation, zero at all, no explanation at all. And it made me angry, made me mad. <laughs> and Lauren was heartbroken and she has not gotten over him for years and she's angry. She doesn't want to be a part of this hockey world anymore because she hates being reminded of Mike and what he did to her. And then the story is about like two years later of his wife has passed, his ex-wife has passed, his daughter is now like 13 or something like that or 15, I don't remember. He sees her one day, just one day, two years later, even though he's seen her a bunch in this period of time, he one day is just like, hmm, I want her back now. And then he decides to get her back now. And it takes her a little bit to agree to this, but finally she's like, oh, okay, we're together now again. And it's just like, he did zero groveling, zero for the way that he treated her and what he did to her. He basically like broke her heart, smashed into pieces, and he did not grovel a single bit there's no groveling. It's a zero for me. No, sir. Goodbye. I did like certain aspects of this book. That's why it's not getting like a two or one star from me. So just a three star from me. Then I have Freehand by E.M. Lindsay. This is the first book in the Irons and Works series. I think that this book is a spinoff to another series by E.M. Lindsay because I was very lost with certain characters and it felt like you should have known backstories about certain characters in this book. It felt like I was missing stuff. Like I felt like I was missing things because I didn't understand some things. I felt like you already were supposed to know prior knowledge, even though this is the first book in a series. I don't like when that happens at all and I don't like how that was not put in the summary that you needed to read that other series first. This is about Derek and Basil. Derek and Basil. Um, I did not know going into this that this was a male romance, so this is a male romance. Basil is deaf and Derek is hearing. And in the beginning of this book, they get kind of stuck in an ATM building and the power goes off and um, they're forced to like use their phones to like communicate with one another. Derek has a panic attack because um, he has PTSD. And so uh, Basil kind of like calms him down, tries to get his mind off of the situation that he's in. And so ever s then they like go their separate ways afterwards and then they haven't been able to stop thinking about each other ever since then. And so that poor, that point of the book was so cute. It was amazing. I loved that. It then took to like 60 or 70% for them to finally see each other again after that point. So you have this giant gap of them not being together and them going on other dates with other people. I don't want to read about that. I don't want to read about you going on dates with other people. I don't want to read about the love interest liking other people or going on dates with other people or thinking that way about other people. I don't care about that. I want the couple to be together. The majority of this book was them not being together. It wasn't even a slow burn. They like didn't, they weren't even next to each other or see each other until like 60, 70% away through the book. And just, 
I didn't care. I did not care. This book took me months, months to get through. If you would have seen one of my Kindle Unlimited, um, what's my Kindle Unlimited shelf videos like months ago, this was on here. It's been on my Kindle Unlimited subscription for months. I, oh, I wanted to DNF this so bad, but I also really liked it because I like Derek. He was, um, he's a tattoo artist, which is really, really, really cool. Um, but he does ha have some PTSD involving, um, parental verbal abuse. It's bad. Basil is a florist who struggles with um, being in relationships with hearing men because he has some PTSD with uh, his previous boyfriend who was hearing who would make fun of him in front of his hearing friends. And Basil like finally realized this and he was so embarrassed and felt so betrayed and it was horrible obviously but like I did not like how they weren't with each other. Like it it doesn't make me feel like this was a romance book if they're not together. Like they weren't. <laughs> I will say I loved how sweet the story was because this was definitely sweet and cute and I love the diversity in this book. It is spot on amazing this diversity in here. You have disability representation, you have physical disability representation as well. So many people are in the LGBTQ plus community like everybody in the story is and it's totally normal except Derek's dad is I believe he's homophobic if I remember correctly. I may be wrong. It's been like a month since I've read this. And so like, that's the only time we get a little glimpse of that. But like everybody is so welcoming and opening to everyone's sexuality, which was great, amazing. I loved that. I definitely want to maybe look into E.M. Lindsay's other books to see um, if they're as diverse as this one, because that is fantastic. Um, however, this book was too long way too long. It's like 300 something pages. And the couple was not together for a long chunk of this book. And it honestly frustrated me. So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Where Winter Finds You by J.R. Ward. This is book number 17.5, a part of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. You cannot read this book as a standalone at all. This is all about Trez and, um, you recently read about him in one of the previous books called The Shadows, um, and this is basically his story about him getting his happily ever after. I'm not gonna talk about this book because it is number 17.5 in a series, and um, this is just a part of the Black Tiger Brotherhood vampire romance series. Vampires exist in the world, but humans don't know about them, and so the Black Tiger Brotherhood is basically like a group of vampire warriors that protect the vampire race, and so Trez um, is kind of a part of the Black Tiger Brotherhood. He's not necessarily a Black Tiger Brother. He he helps them. He per he helps the Black Dagger Brotherhood protect other people, if that makes sense. And so this is about his romance falling in love with um, another vampire woman. I also gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This just wasn't my favorite in the series, so that's why I gave it the rating that I gave it. I then have Fire in Her Dreams by Ruby Dixon. This is book number 9, a part of the Fireblood Dragon series. These are uh, shifter romance books. Uh, taking place on earth but it's post-apocalyptic so years ago a portal opened up in the sky and dragons started flying out and basically decimating the whole world and these dragons are actually dragon shifters they can shift into men or women um and this series is about each dragon finding their mate and so the hero finds his mate with the heroine by dream jumping like he jumps into her dreams and yeah he like takes her off and flies her off into the sky and they become mates and everything there's like this also giant other plot happening as well that they're kind of in the midst of, but I don't want to talk about that because that plot doesn't pop up until like maybe like book four in the series and I don't want to spoil that for y'all. Again, this is another situation where this wasn't my favorite in the series. Um, I did enjoy reading it. Um, it was fun. I find all of Ruby Dixon's books pretty fun. I ended up just giving this one a four to five stars and I cannot wait for book number 10 to come out. Book number 10 is going to be the last book and I'm very excited to read it whenever it comes out. I then read Do You Want to Start a Scandal by Tessa Dare. I have finally completed the Spindle Cove series. This is book number five in the Spindle Cove series, and this was super fun. This is all about Miss Charlotte Highwood and Piers. You met Piers actually in the Castles Ever After series. Um, it's one of these books. It's Say Yes to the Marquess. He's basically the hero that was not picked in that book, and so he, sorry, my lights are. <laughs> moving um he basically wasn't picked in that book and so this is this romance you know and so you learn about who Piers really is in that previous book so I'm not gonna tell you who he is because it's a spoiler and so you learn about who he is in that book and so he's like on another mission I'm not gonna tell you what you could kind of assume anyway he's on a mission and um the place where he's like working now is uh a place where Charlotte Highwood is visiting. So Charlotte Highwood, you've met her in the previous Spindle Cove 
books and her mother is hilarious. I love her. Her mother just wants her to get married to a well-to-do rich man. That's all she wants and she is she's very funny a funny way like going about it and so Charlotte and Piers kind of get in a compromising situation. Do they now have to like be engaged even though she does not want that she wants an independent life she doesn't want to follow her mother's rules like she wants to not be married and so she's trying to like figure out like because they people basically heard noises in a room and they assumed it was them but it wasn't them so she's trying to find out the couple who was actually like together that night so they can like reveal themselves and be like hey we're actually these people they are not in a compromising position actually and so like it's her journey trying to figure out who the actual couple was in that room and Piers may or may not help her in finding this couple but he like he may not help her because uh, he actually might want to marry her. <laughs> I love how Charlotte finally got her own love story in this. Really cute, really sweet. I love how Piers finally got his happily ever after too. I just ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. I then read a novella called When She's Bold by Ruby Dixon. This is book number six, a part of the Rizdiverse series. This is about Lucy and Rektar. I feel like you could read this one on your own if you wanted to, um, but I think you get the most enjoyment if you read all of the books in the series. This is book number six, so like do do with it what you will. <laughs> this is about Lucy and Rektar. Lucy is a human woman on this farm planet called Rista 3 where humans who were previously abducted by aliens like they come and um are kind of like refugees on this planet and they own farms and so Lucy owns this farm. She has been crushing on like kind of like the town chief of police they don't call it that but essentially that's what it is named Rektar and she's been crushing on him and so she like bake, brings him baked goods every day to try and like flirt with him and stuff and he's just like not getting it he does not understand this woman wants him and so she like comes up with this elaborate scheme to get him to come over to her house he ends up having to like stay the night with her and uh, they may or may not finally get together and reveal their feelings for one another because he is very smitten with her but he doesn't think that she likes him but they do they they both like each other there's longing in this really cute i really liked this one i gave it a four out of five stars i then read neighbor dearest by penelope ward this is a romance between chelsea and damien and they are next door neighbors in this apartment complex now chelsea has been having these uh therapist calls about her ex-boyfriend who was honestly just horrible to her and so damien can hear <laughs> these therapy conversations uh, through the wall because it's a very thin wall and he just starts laughing one night because this therapist is ridiculous and her stories like Chelsea's stories are honestly kind of also bizarre and hilarious and so he just starts laughing and Chelsea is mortified and angry <laughs> so she goes over to like give her a piece of give him a piece of her mind and then his big dogs kind of like trample her and so she's like is so embarrassed and traumatized. He gives her this shirt as an apology. Like, it's very cute, very sweet. And like, they end up becoming really close friends. They become best friends. It's a neighbor's romance, best friends as well, friends to lovers. And um, they're both really attracted to one another and really like one another. But Damien will not let it go far enough in friendship. I kind of want to tell you why, but I also don't. Like, um, I per okay, I'm gonna tell you something that like, I guess if you don't want to know anything else about, else about this book, you can jump to the, the next clip. But I feel like this is something that some people should know about because I was a little bit uncomfortable with it. Um, this is the only thing that I didn't love about the book. Okay, the main reason why Damien did not want Chelsea to be with him is because he did not want to be a burden because he has a um, terminal illness. And that was his big secret. That was the big secret part of the book. And like, I personally don't like when that is a secret, especially when the character has not shown signs of that previous illness throughout the book before that was revealed. It, there was never any precursor to his condition and like as someone who has a condition there are signs of it in your everyday life or at least should pop up every now and then if you're spending that much time with somebody like it should become apparent or like noticeable at least and it just it kind of irks me when you use a illness or a terminal illness chronic illness as a plot twist. Like it really irks me because that is something part of my life and I don't foresee it as a twist in any way. That is something that is a part of me. That's the only thing I did not love about this book is because that whole reveal, secret keeping thing is that he has a terminal illness and like that was his reason for keeping a distance. Full Tilt by Emma Scott. Like that one, if you've read that book, you know. But at the beginning, you know the hero is struggling. And this one, you don't know because it's a big reveal. Like it really, it 
kind of made me a little upset so that's why i could not give this like more than four stars um even though i really loved their chemistry i loved the friends to lovers aspect i loved how much they grow grew with one another and like truly got to know the other person and love the other person for who they are however that whole illness thing like really um ruined it for me honestly next i read neon gods by katie robert this one was so close to a five but it wasn't um the heroine was not my favorite character but we'll get into that so this is a Hayes and persephone retelling um persephone is basically um forced to say yes to a marriage to zeus um even though she doesn't want to be in that marriage because zeus has been rumored to kill his wives and so she's like i don't want to do that so she runs away and she comes across the river styx and Hades lives there and so Hades kind of takes her in and they form this fake relationship to get Zeus off of her back and so he can get back at Zeus because Zeus has hurt him before like really hurt him in the past so he kind of want to get what kind of wants to get back at him so they have like a relationship together in public and also in private um even though it's fake they still can't keep their hands off of one another um and so I really liked this one. I thought it was pretty hot. I thought it was fun and I really loved how caring Hades was. I love a good caring hero. I also love what Katie Robert did with like the mythological tales with the Greek gods and everything. Um, I really love what she did with Orpheus and Eurydice and like I feel like that was like just the beginning of their story and hopefully we'll get a book about them because I love the story of Eurydice and Orpheus even though it's very tragic. <laughs> I think the story is very fascinating. The reason why I did not give this book five stars is because of Persephone. I do not really like Persephone, honestly. <laughs> I'm a big advocate for taking care of yourself and your health. I'm just a big advocate for that. And I don't really like heroines that are like, oh yeah, I just didn't feel like eating today. So I didn't eat today. So that's why I'm faint. I'm like, you need food to live. I understand people who have um, eating disorders and everything that that's a whole nother thing. And like, I totally understand that and totally get that. This is a totally different thing going on. I just don't like it when characters like put their health at the wayside. Like another thing that Persephone did is like she got her feet like cut up by running and she doesn't tell Hades when she is in pain. Like she doesn't tell him like, hey, I think I need to stop walking. I'm in pain right now. She just lets her feet bleed. And Hades is so upset with her. And it's like, why didn't you tell me you were in pain? She's like, oh, I don't know. Like, girl. <laughs> I, I personally don't relate to those characters at all. I'm a big, big advocate for taking care of yourself. That was not taking care of yourself, honey. And lastly, my favorite book of the month was Always Only You by Chloe Lees. Now, this one is so good. Five stars, five freaking stars. Oh my gosh, this book is so good. <laughs> this is about Frankie and Ren. Ren is on this very popular hockey team and Frankie, the heroine right here, as the kind of like social media manager of the hockey team. Ren, the hero, has been secretly pining over Frankie for years, like years, and has not been with a woman since he has seen her years ago. He's like been slowly longing and pining and waiting for Frankie because he knows that Frankie, up until the point of this book, was not ready for a relationship. Like he knew that. And so he didn't want to pressure her into anything at all. So he's just been patiently waiting then one night frankie's apartment gets broken into and she ends up staying at ren's house overnight and this may force frankie to like finally reveal her feelings for ren because she thinks ren is like one of the best people in the entire world and whew, it's amazing because they truly become like best friends and then they finally like reveal their feelings for one another and it is so cute i love the representation in here frankie has autism and she has rheumatoid arthritis I can't ever say that word up right on the first try. <laughs> Rheumatoid arthritis, so RA. My lovely friend Tori from Out of Life has RA and she loves the representation in here. So um, I feel like the representation is done well if Tori says it is. I love the discussion of chronic illnesses and chronic pain in here as somebody who does have a chronic illness. I adored that so much. I related to both characters in this book, which hardly happens for me. I hardly relate to both characters in this situation, but I did, I love Frankie and her whole journey with her chronic illness. And like, I totally relate to her in that, but I also really relate to Ren. Ren is a softy and like a total romantic at heart, which is totally who I am. He's just the type of person that is willing to wait for somebody. And I feel like I'm the same way. And like him just pining over somebody for so long and knowing when the right time is to reveal his feelings. He's just like, oh, it's so good. I love this one, of course. Can't wait to read more of Chloe Lisa's books five flippin' stars from me. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I ended up reading in August. Please let me know if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one.
拜哦。